Bioshock in five minutes. Everything you need to know about the story so far. Spoiler alert. It's 1960, and Jack is on a relaxing airplane trip. It was back in the good old days when you could still smoke on the plane. But he barely had time to enjoy that rich, smooth flavor. The jet crashes in the Atlantic and Jack's the only survivor. He swims to a lighthouse where a bathysphere awaits. Strange lighthouse in the middle of the ocean with an ancient submersible inside? Oh hell, why not? Jack pulls the lever and goes under the sea. But this isn't a Disney movie. But that is a big mistake. Instead of talking crabs and hot mermaids, the first thing Jack sees is a grisly murder. <laughs> According to the In Bathysphere movie, Jack's found the underwater city of Rapture. It was built in the 40s by Andrew Ryan, a rich guy who wanted to craft the perfect society. What could possibly go wrong? For starters, everything. His utopia is now a nightmare. Jack is still drying off from his bathysphere when he's contacted by an Irishman named Atlas. Atlas wants to help Jack survive, but it's not going to be easy. I'm Atlas, and I aim to keep you alive. See, the scientists of Rapture found a special sea slug whose stem cells could rearrange human genes. They called this stuff Adam and started injecting themselves with it. On the plus side, they got superpowers. On the minus side, it gradually ruined their bodies and drove them insane. Be no better off with a metal daddy, little fish. The folks that use Adam are called splicers, and the ones who aren't dead are bloodthirsty and bat crazy. Get out of there! Get out now! Atlas agrees to help Jack escape, but Ryan has other ideas. The paranoid old man thinks Jack is a foreign agent. So tell me, friend, which one of the is sent to you? So he orders his splicers and machines to take him out. Luckily, the people of Rapture built a series of tubes into all their surveillance cameras and machine guns, so with some patience and cursory knowledge of fluid dynamics, Jack can hack into them and turn them against the splicers. But he'll need more than that to survive in Rapture. Enter plasmids. These genetic add-ons give you sweet powers like lightning hands and the ability to send swarms of bees at your enemies. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Oh, no, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Rapture may be a hellhole, but it has the world's most advanced vending machines. Welcome to the circus of value! Jack uses them to buy supplies, invent new weapons, and get more plasmids. He needs to beef up, because Rapture's swarming with these guys. Pretty much your standard guard dog. They're called Big Daddies, and they were created to protect these little atom harvesting machines. They wander Rapture, scavenging the dead for their atom. Big Daddies are tough customers, but if Jack takes them out, he can kill a little sister and suck out all her atom. Or he can have a heart and save her. You saved me. No free junk, but every once in a while the girls get together and leave him an atom filled teddy. Cute, in a creepy way. The people of Rapture carefully recorded their thoughts as they went out of their gourds. Through their journals, Jack finds out the gangster Fontaine was the real muscle in Rapture. You don't f Fontaine! Fontaine f you! He took advantage of Ryan's loose approach to government to build a criminal empire. Ryan thought he killed Fontaine in a shootout, but the gangster re-emerged incognito as a freedom fighter. He led a revolt against Ryan, and the result was a civil war that spun out of control. Fontaine was trapped in the crumbling city he helped destroy, so he went to plan B. Come again. Two years back, Fontaine had acquired the embryo of Ryan's illegitimate child. Dr. Tenenbaum, the scientist who originally unlocked the secret of Adam, grew the kid to adulthood in just two years. Then Fontaine sent the genetic freak to the surface to wait for instructions. Turns out that freak is you, Jack Ryan. Jack was programmed to return to Rapture and come to Fontaine's aid. Jack crashed that plane, and his Ryan family genetic code allowed him to breach Rapture's security. And that helpful Irishman, Atlas? It was Fontaine all along, using Jack as his pawn. Every time Atlas says, Would you kindly? He's actually giving Jack subconscious commands. You could say this news was a shock to Jack's system. He kindly helps Ryan with his golf swing. Um, juices! Then he hunts down Fontaine along with Tenenbaum, who goes all Oprah. With the help of her and the little sisters, Jack dresses up as a big daddy to get to Fontaine. He's so hopped up on Adam, he looks like the guy on the cover of Atlas Shrugged. See what they did there? But he looks scarier than he is, and Jack takes him out. Then it's up to the surface to live happily ever after. And just like real life, Jack's happiness is determined by how many little girls he's killed recently. If he saved most of the little sisters, he ends up adopting them and paying for their college. And they all get married on the same day. If he took most of them out, What's he turns all evil and everything goes all hunt for Red October. Either way, Rapture will survive, and the bad guys are dead. And now that the bosses are gone, the people of Rapture can finally party in peace. <laughs>